Well, hello, wonderful people. Welcome to another Friday. For all you nine to fivers, you know that saying still sticks. Thank God it is Friday, right? I pray that you've had an amazing week, that um, you have seen the hand of God in some way, shape, or form. If it's uh, as with a little thing or some really great miraculous thing, that you could be encouraged and still know that the Lord is with you, yeah? I know that I purposely am always looking for God to do something. If it's in the twinkle of a child's eye or a friendly smile from an elderly person, you know, to getting a parking space right up front in the city, it is a good thing to have God that is with us. Amen. You know, it's been an interesting week, right? Really an interesting season because, you know, there's a lot of politics that are, are going here and there with a, a presidential election coming and people signing off and candidates promising things and uh, threatening that if they're not um, voted in, then terrible things are going to happen to us, which is nothing new that's just how politics are and um but there is some truth in in the idea because we also hear a lot about um freedoms right uh with certain policies or politicians and um i think that's it's a god-given desire to be free right it's not just the United States thing, it's a, it's a human thing. And I think freedom is the true human goal, right? I mean, and that could look like a lot of things. Like, well, you know, um, you know, it's not like we're all in chains or in jail or something, but maybe freedoms from hurts or freedom from challenges, freedom from sicknesses, freedoms from who, who knows? only we know. I know that I greatly desire freedom in my life, freedom with issues that are in my heart. And life is only true if, if it's free, right? I mean, if, if we suffer with pain, and I know we can't stop those things, or suffer with hurt or bitterness, or even just suffer with economically, you know, it one feels like, am I really living? You know, is this really a life? And the unfortunate thing is, is that there's this obsessive concern for f security. What I mean by that is, is that, you know, we could be so concerned about the future or the neighborhood or or something bad's gonna happen to us. And fear is the number one thief of, of freedom. And a lot of times with an obsession of, you know, concern for security, it, it freezes us, you know? We, we become paralyzed. And depending on how paralyzed we are, Maybe we can't rejoice in the Lord. Maybe we can't be appreciative because we're overwhelmed with the obsession of I'm not safe or I don't know what's going to happen. You know, tomorrow am I going to have a job still even though our jobs aren't threatened? And I've said over and over again in different, you know, arenas that fear is the enemy's you know, best tool against us, though he has a lot of them. That's the best one, because then if we're so fearful, we're not going to live in the freedom that Jesus has promised us. Because then we're so consumed with the obsession of, of whatever. And so the more preoccupied 
we are with security, then the more visible the force of death becomes, right? If we're so more and more fearful, then what? Then our feelings are going to be that this terrible thing is going to happen to us, right? Like death is closer or this imminent thing is going to happen to us because we're constantly consumed with the thoughts and ideas of it. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, it says this. It says, For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery or to the yoke of bondage. Here Paul is saying, look, we have freedom because Christ set us free. You know? And it, we're free. We have to stand in it. It's literally this intentional, you know, effort to say, I'm going to be free. I'm not going to be overwhelmed with fear. I'm not going to be consumed with anxiety because Christ has set us free. He set us free from sin. He set us free from the bondage of fear. And so I'm just saying, beloved, with all this talk, political talk in the air, and we know that Christ is the only true freedom. We understand that. My point is, is, are we living in it, my beloved? Are we living in it? Are we truly free in our hearts? Because it is the internal place where we need to be set free. And that's the question for you. I know that I'm on an endeavor to be free. I know I'm still bound to certain things, certain deep hurts that I really have been working hard to shake loose, but I don't feel completely free. And I'm not saying, well, it's black or white. God has, has done so much and does so much for me. Don't get me wrong. But hey, I'm a literalist when it comes to the Bible. And if he says that he has set us free and we shall be free indeed, then I want to be free. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. Let's not be overwhelmed with the things of society or if you're following the politics so closely and feel if your candidate's not going to be elected, then it's the end. No, even if the wrong, you know, the wrong candidate is selected, it, it, it doesn't take away from the power of God protecting us as a, as, you know, as a family, as individuals. God is so good to us, beloved. And let us embrace, yeah? Let's, let's grab hold of the freedom that we truly have. And for some of us, it takes work because we've got to begin to, to sift through our hearts and to untangle things so that we could release them. So be encouraged. We serve a God that, you know, set us free. For the sake of freedom, he set us free. So we are free. But let's really live in it. Because that's true life. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And uh, I wish you the best.